And away we go. All right, yo, how was your day, man? Uh, but that's been great. A lot better than I thought it would have gone. Honestly, although me too. Yeah. I'm sorry, you were saying. I was going to say, although it isn't much, it's still better than I expected. Yeah, honestly speaking, man, it's like, this is like, you know, other than Monday, this is probably the one of the good, like, best days I've had during this week. And uh, I got to say, uh, sorry. Yeah, I got to say, like, right now, it's like, I'm really just, you know, my friend, friend's house, like, you know, celebrating his birthday. But like, you know, for the most part, you know, it's a pretty good day. And uh, I got to say, you know, for the most part, yeah, this is just like a been pretty, pretty good day. We're going to see a movie in a bit. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I'm glad. Yeah. So, like, you know, is there anything in the news lately? Well, uh, a, a night or two ago, something happened and a lot of people were talking about it. What happened? The, the vice presidential debate happened. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Honestly? What about that? Well, personally... I think a lot went a lot better than I expected. Certainly better what happened between Trump and Harris. I'm sorry, what'd you say? I'm saying that vice presidential debate went really well. A lot better than Trump between Trump and Harris. It did? Really? I didn't watch it. Yeah. Well, the thing, well, uh, yeah, I've watched it. Well, what the vibes I got is Vance and Walls actually agreed on a couple of things. Oh, I mean, wasn't Vance like, you know, but wasn't Vance like a liberal like he was at one point? So I, I can kind of see well, why they would agree a little bit. Yeah, but but it's not just fans agreeing what Walls is saying. Walls also, I've heard Walls in that presidential debate, vice presidential debate, he'd agreed to build the wall. I didn't believe it either. True. Him and Vance could have probably ran for president. Shoot. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's like, hey, it's like, you know, for the most part. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, for the most part, it's like, you know, if they're agreeing on things, they could have probably, like, you know, like, you know, ran, ran for the most part. Yeah. And of course, a couple of polls run by. I, I mean, CBS. if they're. I mean, if they're agreeing on a lot of things, it just makes sense. Yeah. But like you know, for the most, but for like you no, know, for the most part, I just gotta say, like you know, um, it's just you know, yeah, for the most part, uh, yeah, it's like if they, I probably gotta watch that, watch that, but it's like you know, if yeah, it's like it's just. They agreed to build. They agreed to build the wall and everything. Like they just agreed on that. I didn't even know Tim Waltz had it in him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do that. Tim Walls did say that something at some point, well, straight straight up, he said, "I agree, build the wall." At least that's one of the uh, a short line that Walls has said at some point. Oh, okay, wow, huh? I didn't know. I wonder if I wonder if um, Kamala agrees with that. Probably not, but everyone's entitled to their own opinions. Yeah, pretty much. You know, for the most part, I really, I really don't care what happens. I'm not, I'm not really voting for anybody, anyways. So, I really don't care. But of course, there was one moment, and I was like, what on earth, why would you say that? And I think, I think a lot of people were talking about yeah, this. Apologies. Like, so, when when one of the questions came down to the school shootings, Tim Walls, and he literally said this, I was friends with school shooters. Everyone lost their minds when he said that. He literally said, I was friends with school shooters. Even people on the left couldn't believe it. Really? People on the left people on the left yeah, couldn't believe it, that? Yeah. Yeah, they couldn't believe that Tim Walls straight up said that I was friends with school shooters. Whilst he was talking about well there was a question in regards to school shooting in general and how it should not have happened how you should not deal with. Oh uh, yeah, it's like, you know, for the most part wait, hold on, wait, was he friends with these people before they became school shooters? I wouldn't know about that. All I know is a lot of people are react to him saying that specific sentence. All right, cool, John. I just wanna, I just wanna let you, wanna let you know. It's like I'm hanging, hanging out with my friends, so I probably only have like ten or twenty minutes. That's all right. Yeah, you know, for, for yeah, because we're about to go see a movie, but it's like you know, for the most part, what else is in the news? Yeah, let me just check. Oh yeah, a couple of days ago, it was the hundredth birthday of Jimmy Carter, the former president. Really? Yeah. He's a, he's a hundred years old now. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wait, a hundred years old? Yeah, he's literally turned a hundred two days ago. What's his name again? Jimmy Carter. Wow, that is, cra- that is crazy, man. I've never really... Huh, he's lived a long life. Yeah, he sure has. Right, well, he's one of the oldest people who've ever lived, actually. Yeah, and also in the news, uh, have you heard of a YouTuber called Phidias? Phidias. Phidias. No, I have not. Who is he? So, he's a YouTuber. 
from Cyprus. He has done so many wild challenges. One of them included getting a hug from Elon Musk. That was a controversy with him when him and his friends were traveling across Japan with no money just to get from one half of the big island to the other half, to the other point. And he ran to become a member of European Parliament and he has managed to get the highest vote share amongst Cypriot voters. Oh, really? Yeah. And he posted a video in regards to the digital euro. It's kind of like, kind of like the crypto equivalent to the euro, except it is, it's a program could, under the control of ECB, the European Central Bank. And uh, a lot of people are skeptical about it because, again, it is programmable and the European Central Bank decide what people in Europe, in the European Union, should or should not spend their money on. Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I just saw something. Apparently, they made a whole movie movie about trump and it's like what, what i was like look why it's yeah, like, I you know, that either. yeah i really don't get it it's like bro it's like i know he i know he guy no he almost got shot but it's like man it's just why yeah i think i don't think this could be said for anyone like regardless of position where they come from or what impact they've created why do you hate the person so much that you want them unalive it yeah, makes no I'm, sense i never really get why i never really personally never really get why people would would try to kill one another but you know that's just life at the end of the day and i gotta say like you know for the most part i'll never really get why another person hates another person so much that they want them unalive i'll never i'll never really truly get that but you know that's just us regular people right yeah i guess because I mean, so. at the end of the day it's like this happens every four years and you're making a big deal you're making a big deal about it and it's like people just see people just see trump as their lord and say savior i have no idea why it's like you know he's only a man He's not. He's not God. He's only a man. So it's like I really don't care. I don't hate the guy, but it's, I don't care about the guy. I agree. Yeah, I don't care enough about the guy to like you know speak out and say, oh yeah, you know this guy's gonna save me. He can't save. He can't save you, let alone the world, let alone the country in four years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like you know. Yeah, I never really get it. And it's like you know. I was just like you know saying like you know I never really. I'm still like you know wondering why they made a whole movie about the guy. Made a whole movie about the guy. It's like I get it. Like you know, he was almost martyred, but it's like, geez, man, it's not that. It's not that deep. It's not. But for the most part, I'll be honest. If like you know, it was the debate really that good between Vance and Walt? Yeah, it was actually pretty good. Like, but there was of course discussions about the economy, and of course, and. They, the moderators actually discussed in regards to their military service, and I think one of the moderators, despite the fact that this is broadcast outlets that would report something that's favorable to the Democrats, they asked they asked for clarification on walls in regards to his presence in Tiananmen Square. But people are hearing that Tim Walls arrived at Tiananmen Square a few months after the the big event happened in China, and they were just asking for clarification. Wall said along the lines of that he misspoke on the issue. That's why there was a kind of misunderstanding. But hey, that's all. That's all I have heard from that debate. I don't know why they didn't team up together. They could have get gave like you know Trump a run for his money. I don't know why neither of them didn't work together. Shoot, I mean if they're agreeing on these things, was it really a debate or just them agreeing? Well, they they, they had their arguments like. Vance did, did say that Harris should have should have done something like if Harris was wanting to like well, of course there's the argument that Kamala Harris being the current vice president during the times that Biden was absent she could actually pass yeah. these bills into law that she is saying that she would do if she was elected as the president. I mean, yeah, she could literally still do that, but she's not going to do it at all whatsoever. And for the most part, it's like, you know, yeah, which is why, like, people don't trust her. Because, like, if she's not doing it now, what makes you think she's going to do it later? Yeah. It's like, it's hard to trust some. It's hard to trust someone when they say they're going to do something when they can easily do it right now. But, you know, Kamala, I'd say for Kamala, she's not terrible, but I wouldn't trust her. I wouldn't really trust her with the whole country. I don't think I can argue with that. So what else in the news? So, uh, 
Remember we discussed about Shadow Miner and what happened with Hurricane Helene? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so I was looking I was looking into Hurricane Helene and the impacts in the west of North Carolina. And I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it is all pitted against us. Well, my sleeve, Jacob, because he's the one that's kind of carrying with the, the coding and the implementations and all the other sites that's needed to make Byte a reality. However, and Risk has said this in the chat, that the technology right now that isn't in the public eye, they're so advanced that there could be the possibility that whatever natural disasters that could be formed could be maneuvered towards specific locations just for the sake of halting back the progress of those communities. And I think from what I've seen and what I've heard from these instances, that's what happened to Jacob. Because the, the ideas we have, they're looking really good, and we are very invested in these ideas for when Byte launches, after we get the essential foundations in place. With the ideas that we have for Byte, it got me thinking, could the new Byte be such a threat to the elites of the world? You know, it is a good question to ask, you know, for the most part, like, you know, you think Byte could be a threat in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, like, the idea about Byte surveys, this is like one of the backbones to the new Byte, when... The community can like submit suggestions and feedbacks in regards to what is happening on Byte, whether it be the discussions that are being talked about, one of the users, and of course the layout of Byte itself. But the main, most important thing is what happens in the real world, so what events are going on. And I think when Byte launches, over time, in, in the coming months or years, I think Byte will would lead in terms of providing information to many users across the globe because it's the people on Byte are the ones that's powering the app, not the people <laughs> doing the coding. Yeah, we're providing with putting it in place since we have the knowledge of coding, but it's the users that matter. Apps, platforms, and many services don't exist if it isn't people using it to begin with. Uh, yeah, I agree, though. Like, you know, for the most part, it could definitely be... I, I believe, like, you know, we should do something like that. Um, You know, just like, you know, with the bite surveys and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it's like... Uh, hmm. But as for the natural disasters, you think, like, you know, that they... You think, like, you know, they really are hiding technology that creates natural disasters? It is possible. Well, if they are, which I'm not saying it's true, they... Well, you know, they would not want the public to find out. Because if the people, if the public find out, they will figure out. They want to. Well, they will ask, "How do I get this technology? Should I know the right people to get this?" And of course, if everyone knows about it and something does happen, people say they're using the technology that manipulates the weather or some whatever. So I think this would certainly put an end to manipulation of weather without some kind of confrontation and questioning why they are doing this to begin with. You know, that does definitely make sense. You know, yeah, I got to say, like, you know, they probably had AI before. They probably had AI before, like, you know, it even came out. And uh, I got to say before, and, uh, you know, for the most part, AI has always been a thing. They just happen to, like, come out with it now. And I got to say, like, you know, who knows how many more things they have, like, you know, in the vault that they're still hiding from us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, you know, for the most part, it's very dangerous, and it's very, like, you know, we gotta remain cautious, we gotta remain vigilant, and uh, we gotta, like, always just, like, you know, be aware of, like, you know, what they're telling us. Because now they're just straight up telling us what their plan is. Yeah. There's no arguing against that. Yeah, but, uh, what else in the news? Uh, there's this video on Instagram, and, about it, when I first saw this, I was, like, I was laughing so out loud. Here's the video. So, uh, they found out what was going on with the scales, like height doesn't matter, weight doesn't matter. The scientists slowly learned that if they approached by this lad that has a scale, just to prove a point about does weight matter as much as height? I think I think they I think some of them will know, but over time, yeah, they, they are slowly learning what these questions are coming about. Yeah, yeah, it's like you know, for the most part, um, I 100% I'm gonna agree. Unlike in all of what you said, 
And I gotta say, like, you know, for the most part, um, yeah, like, you know, that is definitely, like, you know, weird. That is definitely, like, weird. That's definitely weird, I gotta say. And, yeah. Uh, what do you think that, what do you think that lady, what do you think that lady, for the most part, is gonna do about, like, you know, what she knows now? Well, well, firstly, she is gonna be skeptical when talking to guys that I just approached them. Yeah. All I can say is, think, People, I think women that are aware of content like this on social media, they are now going to be skeptical by just men in general that just approach them. They do not to have. They don't have to say what reason they have. If at this point, if women see a man approach them, they think they're gonna they're gonna say some question like about height or what kind of, what kind of man they like, or they're, they're gonna ask them. They think they're gonna quickly thing they're gonna ask a question or just to prove a point that they have pretty much yeah they're always gonna remain skeptical on every man they interact with and um that is exactly why men can no longer like you know approach women because it's like you know it's just gonna be something stupid like that you know for the most part it's like you know it's it's really sad though it is really sad but it is what it is at the end of the day it sure is and uh yeah it is what it is you know but i gotta say like you know things will only get better once everything gets worse and you know things aren't really worth things aren't worse enough yet they're bad but it's not they're not that as bad things will continue to get worse until it gets better again uh, for the most part you know, it is what it is you can't really do anything about it all you can really do is just wait and enjoy the show get out of it every get out of everywhere that you possibly can and like you know for the most part just uh prepare for the worst if you believe that things can, will get if you believe that like you know certain things will get better because of your work you're wrong. Yeah, you'll fix certain things, but you can't fix everything. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, what else in the news? Let's see. Oh yeah, there was an announcement that The Simpsons were going to have its season finale. Season finale? Is that the one with John Cena in it? I wouldn't know that yet, because I'm not sure if it has released in the UK yet. Yeah, yeah, I know that there was, a, I know that there was an episode with John Cena in it, and I'm just going to say, I didn't watch it. Just because I wasn't really that interested, but um, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, he seemed like he did a good job from the clips I've seen. Yeah, you know. Then, uh, oh, you were saying? I was gonna say, when people heard about the season finale, what are they thinking? Is this like putting an end? Could this be end of the world? They say, or just a reset? And I think I saw a video on TikTok saying that them having a quote season finale is just a reset. Reset in what? The world? Society? The Matrix? Who knows? Yeah, of course, I understand. Yeah, of course, it's like, I understand. You think it's a reset? I mean, now, I know this is connecting dots, but this is starting to look too clear. This is no longer... It just, this doesn't feel like a coincidence anymore. I, ha- I think, in the past, I have said about 2025 is a big year for regards to another lockdown. Wait, what'd you say? I said in the past, I've said something in regards to 2025 being the year of another lockdown. Yeah, I think it's going to be the year of another lockdown for the most part. I mean, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. I mean, you know, we're fully prepared. If we fully know, I might not be able to get a haircut, but hey, we know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, for the most part, I gotta say, I gotta say, it's like, you know, season three anyways you know it's like yeah for the most part um i just gotta learn how to cut my own hair i actually should ezekiel yes i should you don't have any hair i have hair shut up you're wearing a toupee <laughs> i have hair that's a toupee shut up anyways yeah it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you know for the most part it's like you know, he was just shaking his head no i have a toupee it's not a toupee do you want to pull my hair okay okay why'd you pull it i didn't think you Okay. It's when you pull it. I didn't think you'd actually do it. I didn't think you'd do it either. Okay. Why would you pull it that hard? You told me to pull it. You, huh? pull, you told me to pull it hard. That's what you said. I didn't say that. Shut up. <laughs> Anyways, you know, what was I saying before? Oh, yeah, right. I gotta learn how to cut my... I gotta learn how to cut my own hair and all that stuff, because, like, you know, for the most... Yeah. Oh, yeah, because for the most part, um... Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're definitely going to have another lockdown sooner or later, and uh, we're going to be prepared for it. Anyway, anyways, yeah, for the for the most part, it's like, you know, um, yeah, uh, when do you think this lockdown will take place? Earlier in the year or, like, in the middle of the year? Okay, 
I'm not going to say whether it be at the start of the year or in the middle of the year, because I think that would be too obvious. And I think it will happen when we least expect it, because if people, if some, if people, if majority of people expect a specific time frame within 2025, and then it happens, oh, no surprise, we knew it was going to happen. If it happens when we least expect it, no one is going to prepare themselves to stock, stock on food and other essential necessities. And of course, when they least expect it, they're going to be stuck in a home for who knows how many weeks. And yeah, it's just going to restrict and limit people's preparation when the lockdown happens. And what else? I think I think it's just it's just mainly the case of something to happen when no one expects it, and when it does happen, and people find out, they they just go in the panic mode. And when people panic. If they don't think clearly, they don't think straight about what they need to do. Because all, when they keep panicking for a long amount, long period of time, eventually, yeah, I think that's pretty much what people. I think that's the mind, the state of mind that the elites would want people to have. Because if they don't, because if they're not thinking clearly or have a plan on how they're going to get through this, then by the time lockdown finishes, it'll be it'll be the same case when COVID happened. Like when when lockdown happened, and people thought, oh, it's going to be a few weeks, but it only lasted two years roughly. And when it comes back up, it's hard to get back to the same levels that society was at before it happened. Like I I was in a lecture at university, and and there was a graph in regards to entertainment so there was like a hundred entertainment shows in in the city of manchester when lockdown happened there was 14 the following year 31 and then they kind of normalized again but it plateaued around roughly 70 so even if there is signs of recovering it will they will fall short of what levels were like before the lockdown happened and I think that's what they want to do whenever they want to have another lockdown. It's a way to prevent society from progressing beyond what we could possibly anticipate. It's about yeah. limit it's about limiting the growth in I mean, just everything in general. I mean, yeah, I one hundred percent agree and it's like people are gonna get bored and keep making up genders and keep making up a like a bunch of other stuff. And uh, I got to say, it's like, you know, for the most part, it's a way of, you know, just um, keep holding us down. It's like they don't want us to be smarter. They don't want us to be more. Um, they don't want us to be more um, confident in ourselves. They don't want They pretty much want us to be like, you know, a shell of ourselves in a way. Uh, yeah, it's like, you know, you got to fight that. You got to gain more knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's like as long as you realize what they're trying to do, it's like, you know, you'll always have the power in your hands. Like choose to either comply or go against the go against the mold. That's true. You know, and yeah, for the most part, I got to say, you know, for the yeah, for the most part, it's like, you know, you just got to continue to grow, continue to like gain more knowledge because at the end of the day, it's like they're not going to help you. So it's like you got to really help yourself and help your fellow friends, like, you know, gain that knowledge. You're on your own. Yeah, you're pretty much on your own, and like you gotta find God as well. Uh, yeah, you gotta things you just gotta do yourself, and you know everything will come in full circle. Absolutely. Anyways, yes, yeah, like for the most part. What else in the news? So, have you heard of Eurovision? No, I have not. Fair enough. I saw a I saw a video on TikTok discussing that Eurovision once caused a country to stop existing. Wait, to stop existing? Yes, like, there was a, at one point, there was a country called Serbia and Montenegro. It, they, they were just two independent countries as of today, but back then they were one country. And the thing was, the, de- the night of Eurovision was also the same night, well, the same day as Montenegro's election for independence. And before that, there was a song selection to choose which song is going to represent Serbia and Montenegro for Eurovision of that year. And the thing is, half the, half the songs come from Serbia, and half the entries were Montenegrin artists. 
the issue was there was controversy about the judges that was half there was half the judges that are Serbian and half the judges that are from Montenegro. They were voting for uh, for entries that are from their own country. And then when the results came out of the judges, well, they, they were fuming. But the one thing that really separates those results was the televotes, which is votes by the public. Most of the public voted for the Serbian entry, which is an entry that's actually very popular across social media today. And once people realized how the results came down, people were absolutely furious about the selection and what prioritizing artists from their own country than treat the other country's artists. And because the controversy was so, so chaotic, the nation that was once Serbia and Montenegro, they said, we're not competing in Eurovision this year. And then when, once they said, announced that, fast forward to the day of Montenegro's independence election, all they needed is a 55% vote share majority. Montenegro managed to gain independence by a vote share majority of 0.05%. It was very close. And then the following year, well, both Serbia and Montenegro both independent nations didn't compete, but then the year after that, Serbia and Montenegro did compete. On Serbia's debut year, they managed to win Eurovision. And throughout the and up until today, Serbia has been very successful. They only failed three times to qualify, whilst Montenegro has only managed to qualify for the final only twice. So yeah, it's it's quite wild. Yeah, no, that's definitely wild, man. And it's just wild. I really have no words for it. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just it is what it is at the end of the day. I mean, I really don't really I really don't know what to say about it. But all I'm going to say is this, man. I mean, I I just hope things like, you know, go as go as like, you know, um go as planned for the most part. Uh, is there anything else? Uh oh yeah, Risk said something in the chat in regards to Vodafone and 3 refusing to rule out price rises after 15 billion pound merger. Wait, what a risk of, wait, what a risk say about what? So there are, there's two mobile phone carriers in the UK, Vodafone and 3, like literally 3. That's actually the name of the mobile carrier in the UK. That's a stupid name, but I know. Is it good? <laughs> yes, they actually call it 3, the mobile carrier. I don't get that. But hey, life works in mysterious ways. Oh, just a minute. Okay. Five hours later. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's like, you know, me, me and my friend are also, like, you know, seeing this, like, in you know, a Wolverine movie, and it's like, I'm seeing, like, you know, a logo where it says coexist, and I'm like, we're with every religion, and I'm like, there's no way that can happen. Yeah. That's true. Like, you know, yeah, like, because it's like, you know, I mean, you could, but at the same time, it's like, you're going to be leading more people to, you're going to be leading more people to hell than heaven. I mean, it's it's it would be great if we can all worship at the same time, but uh, unfortunately, there's a di- major difference between us all. Yeah, there's there's always going to be something in our world today that that just divides us, and because yeah. of that divide, it just it, it encourages conflict amongst those people. Yeah, I mean, you know, I can be friends with them, but it's like I can't say that like you know they're right, just like they don't want to say that I'm right. It's not even it's not even pride with me saying that I'm right. I just know that that I'm right because it's like you know if you do the re- if you actually do the research and if you actually do like you know your if you actually do the research you'll see that there is a big difference and it's like and if you actually do the research even with Jesus Christ outside the Bible there is proof of him outside the Bible there is proof of his divinity outside the Bible. I looked it I looked it up. I looked it up on that like you know um, liner app that I showed that I showed you. Yeah, that liner app I showed you, like, it's a really good researching app, but, uh, you know, I looked it up, and uh, it's just, yeah, there's just no way. It's uh, it's yeah. irrefutable. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like, you know, yeah, for the most part, but, uh, yeah, what was I saying before? Shoot. I have no idea. Well, I'm probably just going to start start by saying this. I'm going to finish by saying this. We just can't coexist. I mean, as, as cool as that would be, we can coexist as friends, but I can't necessarily say, as a friend, I can't necessarily say that you're right. Just like you don't want to say that I'm right. And uh, I got to say, it's like, why is 
why I'll be honest, is like if your your faith is the true faith, why is Jesus Christ always in everybody's mouth? It's always Jesus, man. It's always Jesus being mocked. Shoot, even that dude Dylan, that even that trans guy Dylan, I'm gonna call him a guy because that's what he is. Dylan, he even mocked Jesus. He's like, you know, Jesus was a real like in the form of a song. It's like Jesus was a real man or something like that. I don't know. It's just all I know is he was mocking Christ. It's just sad because it was a dude in a dress. Yes, Ezekiel was a dude in a dress. You, you know what he looks like. Yeah, but it's like, you know, for the most part, it's like, um, yeah, it's just sad. Plus, he was scrawny. He had nothing. He had he had some muscle, but he was scrawny. Guy needs yeah, to, very true. Guy needs to work out. Which is, a, yeah, but, you know, for the most part, it is what it is. And it was what it was. Exactly. I mean, hey, he's going to pay. So he's going to pay someday. I mean, like, you know, it's like, look. I mean, it's like I don't have to mock. I don't have to mock them to reaffirm my my beliefs. Or why well, know that I've seen that. D- don't play it. Don't. Well, play what that. is it? It's that J Christ video from Lil Nas X. Don't play that. I know that song. I see. What is Lil Nas X doing now? Yeah, I'm not sure to be honest. He he fell off after a bit. Yeah, like eh. like many artists these days. He'll probably come back. Wow, Lil Nas X looks. I'm not gonna say it because we're on we're on a podcast, but he looks not great. Yeah, it's just not the same. What happened to Old Town Road, man? Man, that was a banger. Everyone's yeah. Has he made any recent music? Uh, not that I would know of. And if he did, well, 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 we all know what responses we would get from that. Oh, he made something three months ago. Apparently, yeah, that too. Yeah. Eesh, eesh, just, just eesh. Oh, Lil Nas X he used to be so great. He used to. And I say used and now to. he's not. It's, yeah, he's not. I don't know what he's doing now. But instead of him pretending to be gay, because let's face it, I don't believe he's gay. Why are you playing this one? I don't want to see this guy in the locker room. <laughs> That's wild. Stop playing that. Why did you pause on that? Anyways, anyways, <laughs> it's like, off the video. Get off the video. I'm gonna turn around. Anyways, what was I saying before? I don't know. I was just I was too busy laughing. You know, for the most part, it's like you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, dang. I, you made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> it happens. It always happens. Oh yeah, right. Low Nas X. Um, yes. It's just not the same anymore. It's not. You know, he was a man, but then he sold out and pretended to be gay. Now there are people who I believe were actually gay. Sam Smith. Was he gay? Was he always gay? Well, from my experience, at least I never see him. When I oh. first saw him on, I think X Factor, I, I I would never have thought he would be Wait. gay. And then over time, well, he or they have opened up about their identity, and yeah, I don't think. Well, he looked better before with the suits and with the full clothes on. Now he's, well. Fat. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Because that's all. That's what a lot of people would say. What'd you say? Yeah, I think I think a lot of people would say he'd gained a bit of weight over did, the years. Did he get depressed or something? Like what happened? I I have no idea. I think I I mean it happened. I I never thought it'd be happening like that. Yeah, that's honestly, what I've seen. Hey, fall from grace, bro. Fall from grace. That's all I'm gonna say. Sam Smith is just something. Special. Some. Wait, why did I say something? But he's something. He's not something special. But he's something. What, I wonder what he's doing now. Something, I guess. But uh, you know, for the most part. But you know, for the most part, it's like uh, yeah, it's like uh, what else in the news? Taylor Taylor Swift. Oh Her, boy. Taylor Swift. What has she been doing lately? Well, last time I remember, oh, she said she's endorsing Kamala Harris. But, but I thought she was endorsing Trump. Yeah, but that's what some of the former Swifties have said. I, I thought the Swift, I thought the Swifties were for Trump. You know, there actually are a few Swifties that did support Trump, but when people found out Taylor Swift was endorsing Kamala Harris, those Trump supporting Swifties were like, "No, nah, I'm not supporting Taylor Swift anymore." And yeah, I think I think that's the issue because when you openly show your support for a candidate, there's going to be people that look up to you, that has support for another candidate. And if that's the case, 
those people are supporting another candidate that that's different from the candidate you're supporting, they're not going to support you anymore because they don't share the same values or the same viewpoints in the world. Hey, I mean, hey, uh, hey but for, like, for the most part, it's like a Taylor Swift. I still don't see the hype. I mean, Taylor Swift is not a bad-looking woman, but it's like she's not... It's just too much hype. She's not, she's not worth worshipping. I mean, her music is pretty mid. It's good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just mid. It's all right, but it's not. It's not much, personally. Yeah. Now Rachel Zegler destroys Snow White movie. Did you, include, did, you already... that, did you see that Snow White movie by the way? Sure. Anyways, anyways, it's like sorry we were talking about Taylor Swift. So like you know yeah, as for Taylor Swift, I just don't see the hype. Yeah, I mean I know people like her music, myself included. However, I don't I don't think. It's worth praising one individual because of their talent. I get, I get the person is talented and has good music in the past, but the hype is just too much. That's it's, the issue. Yeah, it's it's a lot, it's a lot, but for the most part, it is what it is. But uh, Rachel Zegler, what has been going on with her? Well, um, she hasn't been so vocal. Recently, because, well, last time she was vocal, they had to change the live-action Snow White movie, and oh, yeah. the release date had to be pushed back, because they mm-hmm. need the time to make those changes that people pointed out. Did you see the Snow White trailer? The new one? Yeah, the new one. I don't think I've seen the new one. There's a new one, right? No. Oh, no, never mind. There's not a new one. Sorry. Did you just see the Snow yeah, White trailer? So. Yeah, did you just see the Snow White trailer? I don't, I don't think I've seen a Snow White trailer. Oh, well, CGI is bad. Well, my friend's seen it. It's like he said the CGI is bad. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, what's bad about the CGI? They just like use like fake doors and some from the original, <laughs> original Snow White movie. Yeah, it's like you know, for the most part, it's like you know, the Snow White movie is um. It, I'm just gonna say this, like, bro, it should have just been a white person. Should have just been a Caucasian person. It just makes more sense. I mean, yeah, I, I know it just like. I, I know they wanted to do this whole diversity thing, but it's just stupid. Oh, wow, these dwarves do look terrible. Yeah. Look, if people want to make movies that promote racial minorities, make new movies that promote racial minorities. It's that simple. Don't, don't, Don't change movies that already exist that has the casting that is appropriate to the storyline. Don't change it for the sake of diversity. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, you can button. Yeah, like my friend wants to button real quick and say something. Okay. Oh yeah, sure. Go ahead. Here's here's the thing. Disney has no originalities because some of the Disney stories came from other countries. Like Snow White, for example. It came from a Germany story. Really? Yeah, I yeah. thought so. Yeah, every Disney movie has zero originalities. It just does. I mean, you know, for the most part. It used to be somewhat original, but like, you know, it's just it's just it's just like the one change in gender genders, race and size. Yeah, you know, for the most part, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the movies are just not, not as good as they used to be. I mean, like, it should sure. create, create a, a better story. That's the one thing Disney can't even create. You know, if they really want to take advantage of diversity, they really could have done something with Princess and the Frog. Exactly. I mean, they could have... They, they'd done it in the animation movie. They, Princess and the Frog with the black person. They could have just done it in the 1900s. They could have just done it in live action. Yeah. It could have done that. I think people but, would have enjoyed that. Yeah, but yeah, the I problem, agree. They, they they always like try to like, hmm, what if we change someone's race, for example? Let's change this race, and then it will be fine. I but mean, no, it's not. It's not gonna go go well. I mean, shoot, they changed Velma's race, and <laughs> then they made then they made fun of the original. Yes, <laughs> just change skin to skin tones and race. That's it. But I think they just use it as rage bait for people to watch. I mean, like. I mean, and Ezekiel don't really like this show, but it's like we just watch it because it's like he doesn't just like want Velma. to watch. Yeah, huh? Just like Velma. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, just like trying to make, trying to make fun of it. Yeah, it's really like we, we we only watch it to like kind of make fun of it. But like you know, we know we're giving them a boost of view, like a view the moment we watch, but still, we just watch it just to kind of critique it, and you know, because it's like it's just that bad. Yeah, I guess in a way we ha- we don't hate watch it, but it's like you know for the most part we just like criticize every scenes pretty much, and it's like it's just fun. Yeah, 
I'll be honest. We said the only decent person. We, we said the only decent looking person is like Velma and Fred. The only thing is they made Fred Fred dumb. And so spoiled too. They did. Not only that, he's a he's a man child from the beginning of the season one. Yeah, he was pretty much a man child from season one. But for the most but for the most part, it is what it is. And it was what it was. Yeah, but uh, I I do but yeah I do have to go. But uh, I do right, have then. to. Go. Uh, but it was yeah no this was a great conversation though. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Nice meeting you, though. You too. All right. And the end. All right. Peace. Later. All right, then. So that was a good conversation. And Eric's friend, who, whose name I do not know because I didn't ask. However, that was pretty good. Now, I will wait for Riss to come on, if he will. Or if he is going to join. I think he will. So, yes, if there was enough time and Eric was still with us, I was going to mention about the two news headlines by Los Angeles Times. One was published October 6, 2017. Knowingly exposing others to HIV will no longer be a felony in California. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. And then another headline by Los Angeles Times, published on May 7th, 2018. STDs in LA County are skyrocketing. Officials think racism and stigma may be to blame. I don't get that. I get I get racism. It's a serious issue. We should never discriminate people based on identity. But how is people going to use that as the reason why most problems in today's world, at least me personally, I don't, I don't, and again, I understand racism is a serious issue, but just because it's a serious issue doesn't mean, it does not mean people should say that is to blame for most of the world's problems. There are other problems in this world that's been caused by other things like cost of living, accessibility to essential necessities, and so on. So yeah, I understand the issue, but personally, this is not it. I, th I think there are other problems in this world that should be getting some form of attention. Okay, so the right-wing German party, the AFD, 40 German politicians, parliamentarians, have officially filed a motion to ban Alternative for Deutschland, claiming that the AFD is a threat to democracy. Now, I do have a question. How is it a threat to democracy? The, the definition I understand for democracy is the freedom for people to choose. So, what if... And I'm not to say I agree with these people. What if there were people in Germany that did vote for alternative for Deutschland? All I can say is, just because there are views from a party you do not like, does not mean you should get, or at least eliminate, members of that party. Everyone has their own opinions. They, they can disagree with them as much as they like. However, prevent, pre barring or preventing a political party from getting into power, it, it's just not it. Regardless of what the views are, whether it be on the right, on the left, parties that are progressive, parties that are traditional slash conservative, Whatever the views that you may or may not agree with, preventing a party getting into power because you don't agree with what they are providing is not the way to allow the concept of democracy to flourish or ex be executed within nations. That is all I will say. Oh man, if Eric was still here, this would be interesting to discuss. In 2020, CNN had Phil has filmed someone with ballot boxes. Okay, so the caption read, remember when CNN filmed ballot boxes in 2020 and literally caught someone stuffing the box? Yeah, that does not look good. To, to be caught red-handed and to be filmed stuffing boxes in voting boxes for a major election, whether it be on a federal level, state level, community, yeah, that is not going to fly well with a lot of people, if they find out. 
if they found out about that. I don't think I don't think a lot of people are aware of the situation. I don't think a lot of people are aware of many issues in this world. Not that because just because people don't want to report on it. I think it comes down to perspective from these media outlets. There are there are certain stories in this world that media outlets believe is important to their viewers. They think it's important to give war updates on conflicts around the world because, well, we all know that war is bad and when you get involved in war, people go out and fight and people people are prone to lose their lives during a conflict. And it's very sad for the friends and family of those people. Yeah, these are something that a lot of news outlets do believe it is important to report on because war isn't good. No one wants to have a war. And there are people that are dying in these conflicts. And there are people being held hostage because of that. All I can say is, whatever side you take on, whatever conflict, violence is never the answer. Even if, and it is true for many years, even if it is profitable. And war is profitable, sadly. How, how much, how are you going to get the weaponry? How are you going to get the vehicles to be involved in combat? You're going to need a lot of money to buy these vehicles and buy the artillery weapons. That's the profit that comes from it. And that's very sad, but also very true. No one, no one, can away, no one would ever turn away from profit, as money is what makes the world go round. And that is very unfortunate to see. However, it is what it is. It was what it was. There are things that shouldn't have happened to begin with. Yet here we are. Well, and there's something else I was going to mention to Eric. Maybe I'll mention to him or Risk next time we do this. Because it's about royalty in the during World War One. For those who don't know about royalty, from what I've seen, majority of relatives comes within the family. From what I've understood, there was concern about royalty marrying to back then people that were lower class royalty for the most part are higher class royal families didn't want other royal family members being married to people that are lower class only people are higher class and the way to do it is if royal families got married into other royal families the thing was there weren't many royal families to begin with and there weren't any royal families that would agree to marry each other, they just marry their own. You can think of it as Sweet Home Alabama, but more luxury. Well, at least that's how I describe it, because, I mean, I've heard a lot about Alabama, and it's in regards to keeping it in the family, literally. But yeah. And I think because of that, I think, and then, of course, even though I may not know people that are alive today during World War One, but again, like I said, about war in general, it is bad. It's awful to be in that situation. I think there's this video, and I think that explains a lot better than I would. Giant sort of event, and they completely neglected to tell you that it was a family affair. If you can fucking around, Kaiser Wilhelm, the leader of Germany, Tsar Nicholas II, the leader of Russia, King George of England, the leader of Great Britain, they all grew up together. First cousins, they had the same fucking grandmother, Queen Victoria. These motherfuckers were calling each other like Cousin Nicky and Cousin Willie and Cousin Georgie while they're taking little fucking picnics at Nana Vicky's fucking house. It was this, it was, it was this time where all these new weapons were being invented and they thought, hey, well, you know, why don't we just, you know, we can get an excuse to To the point where during the fucking war, okay, Zoe Nicholas and Kaiser Wilhelm, cousins, would be in communication with each other and be like, hey, listen, Nicky, Nicky, you don't got to do this. I got so many fucking troops down there. You don't got to do this. And then Nicky being like, no, but you do not understand, Cousin Willie. I'm going to fucking do this. It was, it was just a giant more fucked up than that, but the thing is I've been demonetized on TikTok, so if you want to see more of this, you can see content. 
you got to make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube. Make sure you follow me on Instagram also. It's Valenti videos across the board. Follow me on Twitch too so you can get in on some of the gaming. Uh, yeah. That's all to be said. Now, again, I'm not too sure if Risk is going to join, but I think there's always next time when we have regulars coming on, discussing whatever. And actually, you know what? I might end on this episode. But before I do, I will say this. What I've discussed about Shadow Miner in North Carolina, at least in the west of North Carolina. Hurricane Helene. Man, that that is a wild hurricane to go through. All I can say is now is, I hope Shadow Miner's alright, his friends and family are okay, and they are getting the support they need to ensure they can continue with life as normal. And despite what is to be believed from these events, natural disasters and the delays that came from it, which Shadow Miner has said, that the power's been shut down for a couple of days and it's kind of halted for, for a bit. Hopefully, no matter how bad things get, it will always get better. It, it's not it's not going to be peachy, unicorns and rainbows. However, it will never be as bad as the situation we're in right now. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's the episode, guys. So, uh, until next time, stay tuned for more.